Hey, I was just talking to um, Kyle about some of the cars uh, we need to get organised, um, particularly for the summer nets. Um, Mr. PSI, I just wanted to get an update on that, and also the XR8 and um, Daniel's car. Just, I've got him ringing me, asking me about how that's going. If you can just uh, give me an update on them. Okay, Mr. PSI, we are hoping to get that on the dyno on Thursday. Done a, uh, an oil change and a few bits and pieces, getting it ready for that. So that Thursday, I'll get on the dyno. Yep. Um, XR8, uh, Robbie's done a fair bit of work on that while George's been on holidays. When George gets back and do the roll cage and hopefully go out racing uh, by the weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bust some chops to get out there, mate. Oh, so I know, I know. Well, I got him into it, so he should be right. And Daniel's just got to uh, do that uh, transmission conversion. We've worked out most of the uh, the uh, stuff we want to do with it, so uh, it's on the hoist, ready to uh, measure up okay. and do the, the okay. uh, All right. transmission. No worries. All right. All right. Talk to you later. Okay. Um, I'm just adjusting the tappets up here on uh, Mr. PSI. Um, I'm just doing uh, some pre-dyno checks um, to make sure it's all good before we put on the dyno later this afternoon. And uh, the reason for that is um, things change and we haven't run it up for such a long time. It's good to check everything over, make sure everything's good before we do run it up. And uh, the, the exercise today is going to be to make sure we've got the same power as what we had uh, last time we ran it up. So we've got a good baseline to start with. And then from there we'll be playing with uh, cam timing first and, uh, and then maybe changing the camshaft to try and get some more power out of it. Now I'm just adjusting the uh, intake tappets to 10th hour and the exhaust tappets to 12th hour. Alright, and move on to the next one. Alright, what I'm doing here is tying the car down. Um, obviously a car with this much horsepower, although we're pushing for 2,000 horsepower, uh, it's very hard to make it um, the tyre actually grip on the rollers. It's very easy to get wheel spin. So we've got to tie it down extremely hard in, into the, um, the front and rear roller. So what I'm doing first, I've got a, a chain which um, is on a pulley system, um, which the pulley is down in between the, the rollers. And I'm just going to hook that over there. Um, now that chain is attached to the airbag system down here, um, which just pulls on the, it's got about 100 pounds of pressure pulling on the chain, which in turn pulls uh, on this bolt, which pulls the tyre down into the middle of the rollers. And we've also got uh, straps, which I've got a strap going through here, which is hooked onto one of the hooks, which is already on the car. Um, and that's to hold the, the car back into the rear roller. And on top of that, we might even run another strap um, down the ramps and over the front wheel to try and hold the car back. It's quite excessive, but that's sort of what you got to do with a car with this much horsepower. If it was a uh, like a 300 kilowatt car or something, you you know you wouldn't need half this stuff. But something like this needs a lot of um, a lot of effort to hold it on the rollers. All right, I'm just setting the tyre pressures um, in shootout mode. You've got to have the tyre pressures at 40 psi, but um, I think I'll set them to 50 because in the past we've found high pressures to be beneficial to um, minimise uh, tyre slip on the rollers. The next thing is to hook up all the, the sensors that uh, are fed through the dyno so I can monitor what's happening to the engine through the dyno. Uh, the first one is the boost pressure hose, the engine RPM, and also injector duty cycle, which um, is just basically the time the injectors are open versus the time that they're shut. And all this stuff um, just lets me monitor uh, everything through the dyno, which is very helpful after you've done a run, you can go back through it and see if there's any issues anywhere. All right, I'm gonna give you a brief rundown on how the dyno works, for those of you that don't know, don't understand how they work. Um, the main thing that you look at when you're drawing a graph on the dyno is obviously the power. Um, the, the red line there is the power curve. Now that is graphed uh, along the bottom here against road speed or RPM, whichever way you want to do it. Um, and the, the graphing on the side here is horsepower um, or, or kilowatts if it's in metric. Now 
Now you can graph it against a lot of things, like we've got torque in this case, as the example there is torque. But um, on a car like this, uh, boost pressure is very important, so you can bring up the boost pressure. And you can see there, that's the boost pressure there. So it's got maximum boost at maximum RPM, 30 pounds of boost. One of the important things is the weather station. So what it does is it measures the, the temperature of the room, the humidity of the room, and the barometric pressure of the day, uh, which changes day to day with the weather. Um, it's a wireless weather station, so it's always um, you know, adjusting the, the temperature, uh, the barrow, and the humidity, um, which what that does is it changes the correction factor to keep the power consistent. So on a, an example would be on a zero degree day in the middle of winter to a 40 degree day in the middle of summer, You'd, you know, you should have pretty much the same power. This is a dual retarder dyno. It's got two retarders, one there and one here, uh, which can handle a lot of horsepower, um, which is an advantage of obviously over a single retarder dyno, which most shops have got. Um, what what this is here is the retarder, obviously. These two things are the, the rotors, uh, and the yellow things in the centre are magnets. It's called an eddy current dyno. Um, and what it basically does is the magnets control a load by um, you know magnet, trying to slow down these rotors um, and when they do that in, in turn the magnets this lever here which is attached to the magnets is forced down onto the load cell which is down here which it might be out of um, out of reach of the camera but uh, what that does is that the load cell is um, calibrated through the um, you know the, the computer within the dyno so the, the more this lever basically pushes on the load cell the more power um, is showing on the on the screen. Um, this is a hand controller, so I can pretty much control everything I need to uh, from inside the car. Some of the main functions is speed. Um, you can go up and down in 10 kilometre increments, one kilometre increments if you go side to side. So that uh, allows you to very accurately hold an RPM and load point, which is good for engine mapping. You can you know sit in the one load point and get your fuel right or get your timing right or whatever. So to do a basic power run, all you would do is um, get to the RPM uh, you want to start the run out, you hit load, hold your foot flat to the floor, wait a couple of seconds and then hit ramp and that'll, um, that'll run the car through a predetermined uh, ramp speed which is just how many uh, kilometres per hour per second uh, and you can adjust the speed of that. At the end of the run once you've got to where you want to back off, you back off and at the same time uh, hit the load hold button and that just holds a steady load to bring the RPM back down. There is a lot of other stuff in there that we use, but um, basically that's what we do. Dylan, what are you up to? I'm replacing the heat hoses on the fire wall. That's why well, you make sure you get jack stands under there before you get back under it, all right? All right. Okay, never know jack stands. There you go in here, Robbie. Good. Just what are we up to? A couple of fittings for the front cooler. That'll finish off the cooling side. Um, skin some wiring. Uh, get the catch can. All yeah, right. A couple of fittings for that. All right. I'll get the footy fittings for you. I'll send um, Lozzie up to get them now. Um, the, you can finish off that Commodore, get that part over the other side, and come back here and finish this off because Robbie's busting my balls to go racing. <laughs> Big time. Okay. Okay, we've got our uh, XR8 ute here. Rob and I purchased it in 2004 and uh, have been playing with it ever since. First we uh, put some NOS on it and went out and run it. Didn't have a whole lot of luck with that. Uh, blew the engine up. We've uh, since rebuilt it with some uh, forged internals and uh, we've put a Pro Charger on which has gone uh, 11.6. Um, we've always looked to go faster in it. We've put an auto in it and uh, it went uh, a bit faster again. And since then we've uh, come to the, uh, Yellow Terror have come to the party with a, a blower which we're doing a bit of uh, research and development work with them to uh, make it uh, uh, a bit better. We've been playing with the intercooler system to get the uh, intake temps down. And it's since run a 10.5, but uh, we are looking for a nine second pass and uh, we're gonna get there. Uh, we've just 
done the first shakedown run. Um, we just ran it off the, off the actuators, so no boost control, and it made 950 horsepower with no dry ice. Uh, now the first thing we do after we run up a car like this is check the data. And um, the good thing about this car is it's got an M800 MoTeC computer, uh, which Marty wired in pre summon that's last year. And the cool thing about that is it's got every everything in the engine you could want to monitor is, um, you know, you can, you can monitor. Um, the examples are obviously engine RPM, but you've got fuel pressure, oil pressure, oil temperature, um, throttle position, all that sort of stuff. So it's, it's really good. And what we do after the run is we go through it and um, just check everything, like check the lambda from bank to bank, um, check the boost pressure, the intake temperature, and just make sure everything is as it should be. Um, and if everything's good, then um, you know we'll add more boost and put dry ice in it and uh, make more power. Yeah, I'm sitting here in Mr. PSI, a, a car that we built for Lyle Lemon last year, just before the summer nets. Um, it was sort of his dream, his car. Together we sort of devised a plan and created what people might have known now as Mr. PSI. The car you know, brings us a lot of joy, but at the same time, it, it's, there's a lot of pain attached to this car now that um, some people may or may not know, but Lyle passed away at the start of this year. Uh, in, in quite tragic circumstances, leaving behind um, you know, his wife and two young kids. And uh, it, it really um, is a car that um, we put a huge amount of effort into. And I spoke to uh, Lyle's wife um, uh, later this year, and we, we really decided that we wanted to campaign the car at this year's summer. That's basically to live Lyle's dream for him, just to, to do something in respect for him. Um, you know, he was someone who just absolutely loved his cars, lived and breathed um, uh, his cars. Not only did he own this, but he also owned a silver VX Commodore that was set up for drag racing that runs in the low nines. Um, and, uh, you know, we were just lucky enough to build this car for him. And I suppose um, the, the results that we've achieved with this car so far have been pretty amazing. The first summer nats it went to, which was last year, was uh, it came second and um, made just over 1,700 horsepower at the wheels. For us, it's a, it's a labour of love and we just want to uh, show him, as I said, our respect by just doing this one thing for him. It's really nothing in the scheme of things, but I think he would appreciate it and really uh, get be chuffed if we could um, you know, achieve some of the, the, uh, the dreams that he had. So um, the boys are going to be working hard at it and um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll see how we go. But, uh, Hopefully he's looking down on us and uh, that might uh, carry us a long way too to, to achieving some of these results. How are we going Marty? Yeah, good thanks. Did, uh, Ian have a bit of a chat to you about getting this thing organised? Uh, Customer's given us a bit of uh, stick about getting it all ready. Yep, I'm just doing some measurements for Dave. He wants to know if we're going to run the 400 or the torque flight, and you need some measurements to know which one's going to fit best. Okay, did we get it running in the end? What was the go with that? Yeah, after Paulie checked the fuses about five times, it was a blind fuse. You're joking. No. Really? Yeah, yeah. Holy crap. G'day, how you doing? Okay. Just wondering if Rob was in. Yes, I'm just getting for you. Um, do I need to organise anything else? No? Shifter, I suppose. Yeah, shifter, once we work out what trans we're running. Yeah, I suppose, yeah, we need to know that, don't we? Tail shaft, I was looking at the tail shaft, it's a bit of a um, bloody toothpick. Yeah. Yeah, alright. You'll have to make one of them we'll up. Have to, uh, yeah, work out our measurements once we get the trans in. Yep. Alright, no worries. Um, keep at it, mate. No worries. We'll get it happening. Okay, bye. Hey mate, how you doing? Good to see you. See you, come through. No worries. Uh, 
Uh, the first modified car that I owned was a uh, LH Tirana, which I uh, built up, put an injector 5 liter in that, uh, all Commodore running gear. Uh, didn't quite get it finished because I ended up by buying my second car, which I started messing around with, which was uh, a VR Club Sport. And uh, after a few issues with that at the beginning, uh, ended up by building up the motor for it, uh, which was a 355 Stroker, and uh, went quite well. At burnout comps and all that sort of thing, so it went very well. I uh, did to begin with, um, before I hurt the motor a little bit and uh, ended up by doing away with that and that's when I went with the with the built motor setup. I uh, couldn't do both at the time and the plan was to always have a, a car with built motor and, uh, and, and, and supercharger, so that's hence the reason with the Chrysler we went this way. Basically, uh, when I first bought the car, uh, it was going to be buy it and don't touch a thing on it. Um, but two weeks into that, decided to buy wheels and do suspension and then on, obviously got onto the exhaust and then cold air intake and uh, then I tried tuning it and then wanting more again. So I uh, spoke to the guys down here at Horsepower Factory and uh, ended up by building a, a built motor for it with the blower setup you now see on the car. I uh, ran a 75 shot of nitrous through it um, with, a, with a tune on it as well and ran an 11.94 at about 116 mile an hour at Calder Park and uh, yeah, I was very happy with how that turned out. Uh, naturally aspirated as well uh, with just uh, cold air intake, uh, tune and exhaust, ran a 12.84. So uh, yeah, for a big car, definitely got up and moved. Uh, definitely want to try and get into the nines. Um, would love to be able to get there. Uh, obviously it comes down to how the car's set up and, and what we can get out of it. Um, and definitely want to run a good number up on the dyno as well. But the ultimate goal is to, is to run a nine uh, with a big car like it is. Uh, the fastest time run at the moment is a 10.23 at about 130 odd mile an hour. And, um, and that's with uh, nowhere near the amount of work that uh, we've done on this. So. Uh, fingers crossed we get the thing to hook up and, uh, and get the numbers we want. <laughs> she wants me to get this thing finished, she's sick and tired of hearing about it. She wants it finished and on the road. Um, look, she's, uh, she's got herself a little Morris Minor and uh, just finished getting most of that finished for her. So she's got her own little project uh, underway, but uh, she's very keen to get me finished with this car. So uh, yeah, wants to see it running very good. <laughs> Okay, so um, we've just finished doing a couple of shakedown runs. We've sort of got the car to a power level that's manageable. Um, we've got it running around 25 pounds of boost and making just over a thousand rear wheel horsepower. The reason we're doing that is so that as we make changes, we can get some repeatability back into it and know if what we're doing is making a difference or whether um, you know it's it's the change or and not wheel spin or something that um, can happen when you start to push the power level right up into above 1500 horsepower at the wheels. So yeah, so basically um, the purpose of today is we're doing some testing and Paul is just making some changes to the cam timing at the moment. Um, he's moving the cam timing around six degrees. This engine we uh, set it up with a Jessel belt drive which enables us to externally change the cam timing. Normally a traditional engine would have the cam sprocket and everything hidden behind the timing case and if you wanted to make a change you'd have to remove all that, um, make your change and then reassemble it. But Jessel have produced a belt drive which sits on the outside of the engine and we can adjust that sprocket pretty much on the fly um, to give us a result. So we're just making some changes at the moment, six degrees to the uh, advancing the time timing of the cam and um, we'll see what difference that makes. Now traditionally we know that changing the cam timing can move the power band around. I suppose what we're trying to do is move the power band up further because being a, a dyno car and a car that's making uh, peak power um, we're not really that interested in bottom end or mid range torque. We're really looking for uh, peak power so um, hence the, the um, changes that we're going to try and make to see what impact that has. Failing that, we've also got another camshaft we wanted to try in this car, so that's something else that we may still try. But uh, at this stage, we're just going to take baby steps. We'll try changing cam timing, and then um, from there, we'll uh, we'll see what power difference it has, and um, you know, make some further decisions once we've collected that data. Yeah.